Yeah. 
Christian for the services. At this time, those of the family members who are going to have their last few, we encourage you that you can have your few because when we close, I'm very sorry, we'll not be open at this time. You know that body belonging to the church. It's no more yours anymore. As the body reaches the church, it belongs to the pastor and the minister, so don't ask for any opening, okay? So,
die. I know that my Redeemer lives and that he shall stand at the last day upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, and out of my flesh I shall see God. The eternal God is your dwelling place, and underneath thy the everlasting arms. Whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Uh, whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die unto the Lord. We brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Yet do I go to the land of the shadow of death. I will be the end of evil, for I will be me.
and our eternal home. And after the saying of this hymn, I'll turn you over to Brother Edward to continue the program. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. 
of our first tribute will be from Cyril Trimham, relative, first tribute. Spiritual Baptist Church to the children and relatives of the deceased and to all the supporters who are here this afternoon. The last time I was here, I was here for, no, the last two times, the second to last time I was here, I was here for a funeral. That was my mother's funeral. And the last time I was here, it was for, it was in memory of her. And now I am here for a funeral again for a relative. Now, some of you may not have known that Horace was a deceased brother we know as Flevi, and a deceased sister by the name of Theresa. They spent a lot of time at my grandmother's house. I cannot remember a time when Horace was not a part of my family's life. There was a time when I was younger that I thought he was my grandmother's child. <laughs> Him along with Flevi and Teresa. He lived with my grandmother for some years as well. And along with his siblings, they were always at our house. So my mother, <coughs> Mother Trimenham, whom some of you would know, now deceased, and Horace grew up like brother and sister. And I believe this is how we all came to call him Uncle Horace. During those years back, everyone knew him as Sparrow. But strangely, I cannot recall why he was called by that name. Perhaps somebody here might know and want to share later on. It was while living with his aunt Maud, which is my grandmother, that I think he got to really know some of his other siblings. And when I say siblings, I'm referring to those on his father's side. His sister, Teresa, who lived in Barry, now deceased, and the several other siblings who resided in Trinidad at the time. He got to be very close with a sister of his by the name of Vida, who lives in the US. And as far as I can tell, they have been very close up to the time of his passing. I believe that it was while he was spending so much time at my grandmother's house that he met the love of his life, Clarita Joseph, because she spent a lot of time with her sister who lived next door. So I guess it was from admiring her often that he would have fallen in love. When he felt he was ready to take on adulthood, he moved out from my grandmother's home to be on his own. After settling down with Clarita, she became like another daughter to my grandmother. Their children grew up with us and we were very close growing up. It, it was only, however, after we grew up and went our separate ways that we grew apart. Uncle Horace, as we call him, was a family man and loved his family dearly. He was a farmer and practiced farming until he could no longer do so. Even after he was not at my grandmother's house, he would still come to visit her often and he would help her with farming or any other thing that she needed help with. And as long as my grandmother had something, we would get things every now and then from overseas, she made sure that something was always set aside for Horace and his family. Sometimes she made me walk that long journey to take a bag of goodies for him. And that's how close we were. When my grandmother passed away, he kept the tradition of visiting with my mother. 
When my mom passed away, he would still visit our home in Collins where my sister lives. As a family man, Horace was a very hardworking husband and father. He did his best to provide for his family. And he was a very humble and respectful person. Now, I have to say here that despite the fact that he was humble and respectful, he was also very stubborn and quite hasty as well. He had his own views about things and did not like it when others did not agree with his view. Once things were going along the way he wanted it, everything was fine. It was when things did not go as he wanted it that an issue would arise. Now I remember some years ago when my grandmother, his aunt, died. My mother decided to hold a 40 day service for my grandmother, even though she was not a Baptist. But my mother, as you know, was a Baptist. Now, being the family man that Uncle Horace was, he came to help in constructing the tent. There was a disagreement about how something was being done. The rest of the crew would not do it the way Uncle Horace wanted it to be done. And guess what? He packed up his things and he said he was leaving if it was not being done the way that he wanted it to be. So off he went. My mother was surprised that he was leaving. But she told him that she was not happy with what he had done and he apologized. That situation, however, did not change the relationship with us though. Brother Bascom was there and some others and something was not going the way that he wanted it to go. And he later apologized, and he and my mother mended things. As you can see, things were always mended with Uncle Horace. After he calmed down, he and my mother would be back to being family like nothing ever happened. And I must share this final fun story. See, Uncle Horace was a, a stickler for respect. So one day my nephew met him and said, good evening, Mr. Daniel. <laughs> well, Uncle Horace was not happy. He came to the house to complain. The problem was that my nephew had called him Mr. Daniel instead of the expected Uncle Horace. <laughs> he let us know how much he felt like beating my nephew. For in his eyes, my nephew was being disrespectful. That was life with Uncle Horace. Interesting, never a dull moment, but the love was always there. To him, respect was everything, and the family meant everything to him. He never passed us anywhere without a greeting and a brief chat, and we did the same. To Selwyn, Valsina, Godwin, and Ashford, and the grandchildren, I bring sincere condolences from the remaining members of the, fam of the Daniel and Trimbingham family, Pam, Monica, Kendall, Donnett, and myself. His sisters, Vida in the USA, and Judith in Trinidad, and his brother, Ernest, in Trinidad. To my cousins, I want to say, disagreements would come. But just as your father patched things up quickly, take a leave from his book and patch things up quickly. Family is family and family means everything. May you, may you all find comfort in knowing that he is out of pain, and may it bring you peace in knowing that your father knew the living God. May your memories of a loving father bring comfort and peace to your souls, and may his soul rest in eternal peace. Love from the Daniel and Tremendous family. That was Brother Daniel. You know, he was a very, very great man. But we have plenty of kicks with, you understand? Even the villagers in Riley can test for, for um, Brother Daniel, such a magnificent man. Brother, he was in a mission wrong. I remember one sweet memory I remember with our Brother Daniel. He was so straight to the point, as sister said. You know, I remember one time, I put them back my life, I had to visit them. Because, you know, they and Brother Daniel, they were not so sweet. But if they ever was walking up his land, 
and they go reach over my brother down there. He said, man, don't put the hook on my place. <laughs> and then the boss was walking, so he said, you know what, there's a piece of the hook coming over by his brother down here. He said, I said, don't put the hook on my place, okay, okay, I'm here. He said, I cut off with his own. So that was brother down there, very good. So now we'll say, oh, my dear, bless God. We're going to stand up, we're saying, blessed assurance. Jesus is my blessed assurance. On your program, you will fall in place, but I will make a little changes in the program. Don't miss what tell me it's not that. <laughs> blessed assurance, Jesus is my
today. I was looking for. So I asked my father what he had in mind. He said he would send me the scripture. When he said when he sent it to me, I was like, Daddy, this is a whole chapter. <laughs> Daddy said, Well, your grandfather and your grandmother both had their favorite psalm they love to read. And this just happened to be my grandfather's favorite psalm. So, Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and says, Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, but when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood, they are as asleep in the morning, they are like the grass which girds up. In the morning it flourishes and girds up. In the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath we are troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy continents. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is there strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long, and let it repent thee concerning thy servants. O satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad in our days. Make us glad according to thy days, wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein have seen evil. Let thy work appear unto thy servants, and thy glory unto their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou thy work of our hands upon us. Ye, the work of our hands, establish thou it. And to scripture reading. Glory be to the Father. And to the Holy Spirit of shall be world without end. Amen. So the rest say, teach us to number our days that we will apply our hearts unto wisdom. And thank God that Brother Daniel did live to the years that appointed unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time we're going to have some tribute, but before let me tell you, remember the best tonic what we used to have long time? The only tonic what we used to have, it was called... SSS. That was a tonic what all of us know, and SSS mean what? Short, sweet, and spicy. Short, sweet, and spicy. So I am encouraging you just to make it just the SSS, and you will get some strength. Right, Pastor? SSS, yeah, praise God. So I'm going to call on the Evisham Diabetic Group. We're going to have the tribute, Evisham Diabetic Group. This robe of flesh and drop and rise to
Tangerine man, cabbage man, the evil man, the <laughs> Christophine man, the dummy man. And nothing trouble him. All I know, all I ain't getting them quick, 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 so clear, we hear thee, we echo, O Shana, glad
one person and then after we have one more old attribute, make it no more than 90 seconds. Uh, I'll see what's to be. You know it is 90 seconds. 90, 90 seconds. Special afternoon to those that are welcome and to the program question. I'm doing this special on behalf of Kam. One 
question. You know what I mean? We said, no, I tell you what. He said, you don't know, but people are you for any. You know, and simple those words. I put it behind here. And everybody goes, well, how did you have an enemy? He said, you don't have an enemy, but somebody had as an enemy. And as time goes by and the years roll by, I tell you, it's the truth. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Because if this one I don't have an enemy, something wrong, so I just said, okay? Give God the glory. But today I just want to encourage your family to be strong in the Lord and of a good courage. God is good all the time. He has brought you a long way. You live to see your years, your father being still alive, and you live to see that you are a man and woman for yourself. You can fight for yourself. I know you would have brought you up in the way that you want you to be. And I pray that you continue to be there for one another, love one another, and let the unity you know, continue. I just want to leave one little song with you. Because, you know, once you have that full assurance, you can say, Jesus is mine. There's a little song that says, There is not a friend like the lonely Jesus. No.
afternoon and to those who may be viewing online in the restaurant, wherever you may be, a pleasant good afternoon. I am God well this time. For those of you who might have been confused, I have the hope you will task of compressing 86 illustrious years of my father into about 10 minutes. Let's see time is going. But I'll try my best. Horace, Emmanuel, Jack, or Daniel, and Sparrow, as he was known affectionately, was born in Riley on the 21st of June, 1937, to Lillian Jack and George Daniel. He was the second of eight children for his mom. And as a boy, he loved playing cricket. And even though he started, he loved singing Calypso. And hence, he was nicknamed Sparrow by his associates. I heard Cheryl mentioning about that nickname Sparrow. I talked to his brother some time ago, and I was told because of his love for singing Calypso as a young boy, he was nicknamed Sparrow. So he could have actually sing. Brother, <laughs> anyways. He attended the Evisha Methodist School, which was located where the Methodist Church now is in Evisha. For those of you who remember that, I'm too young to remember that group. And it was quite common in his day for many to be unable to read and write. But not my dad. He could have held his own. He was serious in almost everything he did. And his time at school was no exception. His father migrated to Trinidad when he was just a father. So my father was fathered by his stepfather, Walter Thomas, who taught him many things, among them how to farm and born coal pits. On becoming a young man, that he went to live with his auntie man, Daniel, in Collins. You know, Paul, Jerry mentioned that as well. And it is while there he met his beloved late deceased wife, my mom, Clarissa, because she was living next door as well. Those of us who remember the time he was living. Or what, what's the thing? They fell in love and decided to form a union. They started from scratch, and because my dad was not a lazy man, they were destined to succeed. He rented land at Mary Key, just below where we are here now. For the other folks who remember that. And he, but there was where he built a one-room old house. He wasn't going to sit down, especially knowing he had serious responsibilities now. He got married to his new form love in 1972, a union that produced four children and lasted for 35 years and ended with the death of my mom in 2007. Life in the early days of growing up was not always easy, but I can tell you, we never go hungry one day. Daddy would always make sure food was on the table, even if it was a roasted brindy with some lime juice. We would be told, nobody have to know what to eat. We would eat that and then go back to school. We might not have been considered to be, we might have been considered to be the poor class back then, but looking back at it now, we were really rich. 
we were really rich. With two acres of land in the mountain, with various crops, a few dozen yard fowl, and a pig in the garden, we were more than surviving. Yeah. Not to talk about the love that was flowing in the family. Those days, they seem to have been more love flowing around than we see in families today. Daddy tried different occupation. He was a mason and worked at many houses and buildings in this country. And he even went to Trinidad to apply his trade when things got slow in St. Vincent. He worked with the Banana Association, going around spring bananas, banana field, and at one point he even tried auxiliary police, which he was for a few years. I still can remember in the early days growing up, he had the police pattern and the police cap and the whistle in the house, and I would be blowing the whistle, using it as toy. But even though I was afraid of police back then, I was like generation today. Daddy also rented lands in Cora Mountains, which he subsequently bought and did, did farming and settled in farming there for the rest of his working life. <coughs> he was in those land morning and evening, rain or shine. All oh, my siblings and I remember going to the mountains every school holiday and even on Saturdays. And if you know Daddy, well, you will know that he was a disciplinarian. Oh, he was a no nonsense father. A God fearing dad, nonetheless. Going to Sunday school and church for us was no problem. School or church. We would hear the same how you can stay home with a cold and rain nose around up and down. You can go to school and run up and down too. Daddy walked hard and made sure all the leaders in family devotion and made sure we all learned to pray and read the Bible. He was a Baptist leader and I remember as a boy calling him many nights to this same church. But in those days it was just called a praise house. So we used to come here for praise certain nights in the week. At the time, they didn't have electricity. It was a, a lantern show. <laughs> Bishop would remember those days. I remember Bishop would be coming with his lantern and daddy coming up there. You know? And I would come sometimes very sleepy, but would be there with him many nights. He even went to different praise all over America, wherever he was invited. He would take this tree cell flashlight and go and come in back home. We hours in the morning and sometimes I or other siblings will be there with him. He loved to preach. He loved to preach and spread the gospel. And even though he started and people would laugh, but he didn't care. He was fulfilling the great commission. Today, we say goodbye to the man my siblings and I call daddy. But the Lord called bless. The Lord called peculiar. You have fought a good fight. You have finished the race. You kept the faith. And there is a crown of righteousness that the Lord will award you on that day. But for now, Daddy, take your rest. Your indelible man. You will hear them say that I'm dead. Don't believe them. I just change address. Today, my father's body may be in this coffin, but his he's somewhere else. He has transitioned. He's alive 
in the arms of the Lord. And I want to encourage all of us today who mourn. I want we continue to trust in God. Once we do not fail, we will meet again on that great day. God bless you. Thank you. 
with the 12 ghosts of the living child. Stand up for the word.
Soon and body of will meet again. And they lost. He was in red shack. Oh, bless the Lord. Amen. If not so much Christian to live the rest. What are you going to do with me? Power of Almighty God. The Bible tells me, many say, Lord, Lord. The enemy, Jesus said, the enemy with the lips. But the heart, amen, is very far. He is a reader of heart. He is a soldier of mind. He is not a very secret heart. Some people talk sweet for this, but somebody might be telling me how he got him to be one. But that be the God, he knows the heart. So today, as he tells us in the book, when he said, your brother shot when he said, me, I said, oh, yes, Lord. I know he was at the last and the resurrection. But here, yeah, what I said, Jesus said, I am the resurrection of the life. He that believed in me, though he died, he shall live. And whosoever believed that believed in me should never die. Yeah. Believe this, but this, you know. We are really only changed from mortal to mortality in a twinkling of an eye. Amen. Hallelujah. The life we live here to be an example. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't come to make a show, but we come to be an example. But you know, when some people are talking about anything and telling it, there will be enemy. Hallelujah. There will be extinction. Amen. But I don't want to please man, I want to please my God. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I will create my reward. Amen. But at last I run the rest. And I chop the tape the head. Because I know there's a problem, you know, for me. I can remember our oh, brother, Daniel, as the sunset was leaving just because he told me. And this church was just a place of us. And you know, I know, as we come here, we will meet, he told me, and it's true. And we come to worship. We were not so grounded yet in the spirit of God. So sometimes, you know, we pass to and fro. But no man can truly say that Jesus is the Christ, except he take the dark bed away and greet the living world. The world is life and the world is spirit. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord, he gave me the life. He gave me the world. And I got the spirit, amen. I try every day to shine as one way to shine. Sometimes up, sometimes down. Peace, you rock, oh, mountain, buddy. Oh, hallelujah! We had a great position with Jesus Christ. Only we count as a woman and turned the head of his garment. Amen, hallelujah. It lived for us, for we, to put our trust in Almighty God and not in man. Man is big in power. Amen, hallelujah. The great decision, it is Jesus Christ. Amen, hallelujah. The woman with the east of God just pressed forward and thanked the Amen. And she was behold. Many dead and raised to men. Lazarus put forth one. Your brother shall rise again. Yeah, Lord. You know, we have believe. And this what we must believe today. Jesus is alive. Amen, hallelujah. Some people just, just think, they say, Jesus, Jesus. But they know it doesn't feel the presence of God with him. Because when you have the presence of God, it is joy in your heart. Not darkness. He's welcome. He's alive. And this light, even light, Amen. Our eyes is the light of the body. 
And when we have this like everybody can see the light. But Jesus is the light of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. And when the light gets the darkness of the vanish. I want to say this evening, Brother Daniel, you know one week morning we hear and some, you know, very ticklish. Sometimes if you don't get it to do exactly what you do, know, that's the best decision for me. And it's true. Many times you come and say, I want to do what you want to do. And some people didn't give me a chance of to speak to the whole long way we speak. That's the issue for me. Because you don't want it. We say, no, not so. Because I am a, a little higher than you in chance. So, you know, the people get to it. But as a people get it, myself and the others, they have to move forward. So, one Sunday morning, when you had a little service, I saw him approach you over here. It's really well, not like that. And you're so close to us. When you come, I say, Brother Daniel, good morning. I say, morning, very well. I say, you know, I come, to, come, come, come this morning. Because, you know why? I was home. And for the day morning, when I saw a bright light bus from the east back to this prayer's house, I had to wake up. I said, Jesus is the light. Amen. Hallelujah. We must worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. You know, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus, when you read in Isaiah 61, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel. To bring the tithing. To bind up the wounds. Look and heart him. Thank be to God. When you fall from darkness to light, walk in the light. So you see me. I want to say. In a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, at the last job, for the trump shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise. You know, we got this. Some people said, we got in, arise, my soul, arise. And when he 
said, he gave testimony. He said, I was not very baptized in Baptist, but I was a baby pastor. I baptized the pastor and tell me. And he said, well, no, I joined no more because I didn't really joy in the Baptist speech. Hallelujah. And when he said, here was he. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come on to me and rest.
be there again. Yes. You know what it is? Man told them he to dance in. Long ago, when he used to do man, that was something, like a music event. Everybody, amen. Every whole, they pay their attention to go to some little church and give them to our roof. Today, not go, amen. Because of that, men, in the Lord said, men will go out of darkness and light. Man, they came to the things of the world and they shut the good things they call God to us. No wonder no one is.
and the same. And the strength of shame is the Lord. For thank is God who gave us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Shall be able to separate us 
from the top, which is Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Oh, my God. 
from the greatest to the least, and not one creature is forgotten by thee. We now lay this body down in thy keeping, praying and believing to comfort us, and thy grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let the body go down. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He make me to lie down in green pasture. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me into the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yet do I walk to the valley of the shadow of death. I shall not fear no evil, but thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff shall come to me. Thou prepares a table before me, in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, thy cup and cover. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Naked came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Jesus said, All that the Father gave me, shall come to me, and him that cometh to the Father's will, whom, will, whom has sent me, that all that he had given me, I shall lose nothing, but shall rise it up at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone that seeth the Son and believeth in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last gate. There is a green tail found out a city where
After labor, come rest. After struggle, peace. After life, fearful people, they last leave. Fast much, as it pleased Almighty God, after his great mercy to receive unto himself the soul of our brother, have his departed. We therefore commit. Can you struggle? Can you struggle with some dot, please? Wait! <laughs> Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. In the show and the sort and the resurrection to eternal life. Through oh, Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, who shall change our earthly body that it may be like unto a glorious body according to thy mighty working, whereby he is able to subdue all things and his and I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord henceforth. Blessed indeed, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labor for their deeds. Go forth upon thy journey from this world, O Christian souls, in peace of him whom thou hast believed. In the name of God the Father, who created thee. In the name of, the, of Jesus Christ, who is for thee, thee, may thy portion this day be gladness and peace, and thy dwelling place in paradise, who fought upon thy journey of Christian souls. Thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. We bless thee. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we bless thee for the, for the victory over death and the grave which he had obtained for us and for all who rest in him. And we pray thee to keep us in fellowship, all who wait for thee and not and in company in heaven. With the absolute with Jesus Christ, our Lord. Praise the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So the rest of the Christ is my God. To God be the glory.
the the ones who are not